So today, I'm going to talk about electronic surveillance. And I'm going to start by talking about a little bit of the, the role of government in this, why the government does surveillance. Uh, I'm going to recommend uh, No Place to Hide, the new book by Glenn Greenwald. He's the guy who's releasing the Edward Snowden information. He's, uh, he wrote a book on the Patriot Act. He's been very critical of government electronic surveillance. And you, obviously, you can find a lot more on these issues online. And I'm posting uh, notes on this, so I'll, like I did do on each debate topic. I have uh, at economicthinking.org a link where you can find the, where I'm posting on this topic. OK. First, a few minutes about economics. Economics is about incentives. And everything, you know, one, one guy said economics is about incentives. Everything else is commentary. So we look at what incentives people have. And it's not just about private companies that produce things, trade, compete, and try to make money. Uh, economics also looks at the incentives of government. This is called public choice economics. So public choice economics is the study of how governments actually work. It's not the civics course of how governments claim they work. But instead, government officials are just like people in companies. So some guy's running a big corporation. He's trying to make money, grow bigger, make profits. And then he gets elected senator. Does he suddenly turn from a self-seeking profit person to a public servant, wondering how he can serve the public? Uh, well, no. He's the same person, and he's got a different job. But he wants to do more. Just like his company wanted to do more as a senator, he'd like to have more responsibility. He'd like to you know, run more operations or build the size of his staff. Government tends to grow because the people in government want to do more stuff. Electronic surveillance grows because the people that do electronic surveillance at the NSA and other agencies want to get bigger. They want to do more. And they can say, well, our job's really important. We're stopping terrorists from blowing up the country. So if I just had more budget, I could buy more computers, more staff, and we could better protect the public. That's perfectly reasonable. Okay? Now, the problem is that this guy may or may not be competent to do what he wants to do. So one of the things I'll look at in electronic surveillance, if you want electronic surveillance, maybe the government is not the best organization to do it. Maybe the government hires people and supervises it. But to get the highest technology, and that's of course, a two-edged sword. Edward Snowden, they went out to him, to private contractors, to get more competent people. And they got somebody who was so competent, he'd actually steal all the government data and release it. So there's a problem with contracting out. But the point is that the government agencies want more. When people are really unhappy with the NSA and all this information about uh, extra legal uh, surveillance, do they cut the NSA budget? Have you heard any congressman say the NSA budget should be cut by 10%, 20%, 40%? There's no way to reduce NSA surveillance without cutting their budget, I would argue. But, OK, so I've said that. So the question then is, an incentives, what incentives does the government have to engage in pervasive electronic surveillance? Well, the obvious um, is to locate terrorists and potential terrorists. right? So obviously, why are they? You know, checking all these emails, they're doing checking for networks, checking for who's doing what, trying to find information of somebody who's got a bomb, somebody who's going to do this, somebody who's going to do that. But who are potential terrorists? Tea Party patriots? Some old geezer in Ohio who's at a meeting says, I'd like to blow up the government. Well, if there's somebody in the audience from a federal agency, they record that guy's name, track him down, check who he's sending email to, try and figure out if he's really going to blow up the government or is he just talking about it. Gun club members, Christian homeschoolers, very dangerous group. So anti-government, they won't even go to the government schools. So you think about incentives. <clears throat> what else does the government do besides national defense? So I'll come back to this in a bit. But when we talk about electronic surveillance, <clears throat> it's not just trying to catch terrorists. What else is the federal government doing that might benefit from more electronic surveillance? Well, the Internal Revenue Service. The government has the job of trying to make sure everybody pays taxes on all the money they earn. So do people 
who work at homeschool debate camps tell the government about the money they earned at that debate camp? Do they pay taxes? Is it properly regulated? Are people providing debate training to other people and earning money and not paying taxes? You know, the government wants to know. So IRS has an interest in electronic surveillance of every kind of transaction that generates income. Uber, sidecar, eBay, uh, anything, anything where money changes hands, they want to know. So that would be a reason for electronic surveillance. Now, not necessarily justification, but the reason. FEC, the Federal Election Commission, uh, for people who debated the uh, federal election reform topic last year, turns out that the FEC and the IRS, working together, were trying to stop uh, Tea Party people. Anybody with Tea Party in their name or Patriot got uh, blocked by the IRS from getting nonprofit status. And if they got together, even at a gathering like this, and talked about politics, uh, then the FEC and the state election commissions could sue them for not registering as a political organization. If you think about uh, Christian homeschooling and homeschool debate, in homeschool debates, do people sort of 50-50 support Democrats and Republicans in debate conversations or discussions or policies? Or would you say it'd be biased for one party or the other? Totally biased, it's totally Republican. Some libertarians, but they're crackpots, right? <laughs> so if the FEC were to look at homeschool debate and look at these tournaments that thousands of community judges come to, couldn't they say, wait a minute, this is a Republican Party operation. These kids volunteer to support candidates. This is an arm of the Republican Party, and they should register as part of a, a political campaign. Because the FEC says all the money involved has to be registered. So my point is that there's a law out there. It's really complicated. Nobody can figure it out. You need a lawyer. But if you're gathering, talking about politics, you might be breaking the law. So again, another rationale for electronic surveillance to try and find people that are breaking election law. You have a question? No? OK. Um, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, who's done movies, uh, he's on his way to jail. Right, for arranging for campaign contributions to a friend from college who was running for office. He basically got two people to donate to the campaign and he offered to reimburse them. That's illegal according to the Federal Election Commission. If I tell you donate five hundred dollars to X candidate and I'll give you I'll reimburse you somehow, that's breaking the law. So there's a whole range of laws. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, any financial transaction, anything with any company that has uh, uh, stocks in the market or is publicly listed, all that stuff is open for electronic surveillance. You know, if I tell you about XYZ Corporation that my uncle works for and that they're going to go public or they're going to buy this other company uh, and you trade on that, that's a violation of uh, securities laws. So how does the government find out if people are violating the law? Electronic surveillance, right? So the, the challenge is when we create all these different rules that uh, companies may be breaking, you give an incentive to government officials to monitor uh, information. Um, People at the IRS can check anybody's tax records on their tax returns and gather that information. Mostly they check movie stars records because they're interested in movie stars and you find uh, they get in trouble for that if they get caught. Um, so there's a, there's a whole range of things. Does that make sense? So, so one of the challenges is when we have a state that is really powerful, you have lots of incentives for electronic surveillance. And if you say, well, we're going we're gonna to block that, we're going to stop that, we're going to pass new protections, how's that going to work? If you're charging the IRS to raise money, how are you going to stop them when they say, we need to have this information in order to uh, um, you know, make progress? So in California, the government tracks everything for traffic. Uh, uh, the, uh, through the Freedom of Information Act, somebody did a request for information on their license plate. And they, the records were collected from every police car and every cam that's in the intersections, monitoring everything, so that this guy's license plate, he found out that the government had tracked him going through every intersection, everywhere he drove in his car over like a six month period. So why would the government do that? 
Well, because some people commit crimes, some people get kidnapped, some people break the law. And so if they've got a record, if they find out that so-and-so committed a murder, they track to see what car was there, and they go through their files and find out where that car was, where it's been driving, and they track it down.